Good morning and welcome. Thank you all for joining us this morning for our annual TAC members meeting. <clears throat> I want to thank so many of you for participating in the vote for current board membership. We had a remarkable turnout and I personally am happy to be reelected to the board to serve one more year as board chair. And I am so pleased to welcome our new board member, Annette Pulaski. Originally a native of Israel, Annette came to the United States with her husband over three decades ago. As a TAC member, she immediately became, <laughs> excuse me, she immediately became an active participant in our activities, supporting the tech, um, last season's um, talk and tea events. Annette has served as Bay Area Chair of Israel's Bezalel Fashion Academy and as the Women's Alliance Campaign Chair of the Bay Area Jewish Federation. She brings us her wonderful enthusiasm and a wide range of connections. She and her husband and two sons currently reside in the Pacific Heights area of San Francisco. The term for board members is three years, with the option to stand for re-election for an additional two terms. We are very pleased that Renee Koch is standing for another three-year term. Renee is currently serving as chair of the Development Committee and played a major role in planning and hosting the talk and tea events of this past year. Joy Stocksdale is leaving the board after six years as board treasurer. She has done an exceptional job keeping us financially sound and importantly within our budget. So I would like to briefly highlight some TAC activities and events prior to March of 2020. Last October, the Textile Arts Department was fortunate to acquire 10 quilts from the Eli Leon Trust. Eli Leon was a self-taught scholar of African-American quilt makers. Included in our acquisition are works by local artist Arby Williams and Rosie Lee Tompkins, both acclaimed East Bay quilters. This major acquisition was made possible by a $150,000 donation from the Textile Arts Council Endowment Fund. The fund was established in 1993 to provide resources to the department for the purchase of works of exceptional quality, as well as to support exhibits, events, and the conservation lab. Over the past 20 years, the fund has supported a series of articles, has supported the purchase of nearly 75 works of art. We've recently initiated a series of articles in member news that highlight the provenance of some of these past acquisitions and the role they play in complementing the department's permanent collection. It's a wonderful opportunity for all of us to familiarize ourselves with tax important contributions to the museum. In June of 2019, we introduced our first talk and tea a fundraiser designed to offer our friends and members a nuanced look at one of the museum's current exhibits through the perspective of a guest scholar. First with Rubens, then with Tissot in January, we were treated to, look, to a look at the artist's depiction of the society in which he lived, his portrayal of women in that society, and a dazzling look into the style and fashion of the era. Last November, our annual Textile Bazaar took on a whole new personality with its move to St. Mary's Cathedral event space. It was a huge success. And although we've been forced to cancel this year, we hope to maintain some of the momentum generated by last year by featuring our participating vendors on our Facebook and Instagram sites. We'll let you know once they're posted. And don't worry. We're already planning the 2021 Bazaar. Our holiday party last December was held once again at Crimson Gallery. As always, it was a great time to meet, to chat with each other, and to enjoy some food and wine. 
Little did we know at the time that this would be our last Crimson celebration since the gallery has now closed. And as our world changed in March of 2020, TAC searched for ways to adapt to the new normal. Our first step turned out to be brilliant. We can all thank board members, Ellen Clore and Shelley Wells for planning and hosting their hugely popular TAC virtual travels, focused on the life and times and influence of William Morris, the program attracted over 1,000 viewers worldwide from places as far away as New Zealand, Italy, the UK, Argentina, and Canada. It has served as an opportunity for TAC to reach out and share with textile enthusiasts around the world. In addition to reinstating our live tours once travel becomes safe again, virtual travels will become a mainstay of TAC programming. We have also successfully transitioned our workshops to a virtual platform. In late July, Young Min Lee kicked off our, our season with her class on Made Up Korean Knots. We followed that in August with sequence knitting, instructed by knitter and author Cecilia Campochiaro. And as part of the William Morris series, we sponsored two May Morris embroidery workshops with the San Francisco School of Needlework and Design. All of these classes reached full capacity attendance, indicating to us that there is a strong demand for online learning. So for fall, our fall workshops begin on October 18th and 25th, when Alaska artist Kathy Russo will do a two session workshop on traditional knotless netting. You can visit our TAC website to find the reservation link. Another two session workshop is scheduled for November 12th and 19th. This one with the Social Justice Sewing Academy. As you'll learn from Sarah Trail this morning, textile art can serve as a powerful vehicle for expressing ideas of social justice. In order to realize a multi-generational experience, TAC encourages you to register for this along with a younger relative or friend age 12 or maybe a bit older. Registration links will be included in today's Zoom post attendance notice following the presentation. When our ability to meet in person vanished, we had no existing means of maintaining contact with each other. And that was the inspiration behind our member news. As an organization, we have a membership hugely diverse in its talents and in its interest and in its approach to the world of textiles. It has been such a treat to hear from so many of you who have shared your own personal and definitely very diverse creations while sheltering. I thank all of you for sharing and I hope you will continue to do so. And I can't possibly leave without mentioning the outstanding job you all did to create masks for the museum security staff. Since we're a textile organization, you can imagine the diversity of fabric and style that went into this effort. I'm pretty sure our uh, security staff remains the most fashionable one in the Bay Area. And on another note, Diane Mott served as curator of the costume and textile department at the De Young Museum until her retirement in 2009. Diane was known as a person of immense curiosity and an in-depth interest in world cultures. During her tenure, she acquired a number of very important textiles for the museum's collections. Her acquisition of the full set of ecclesiastical vestments created for the Royal Chapel at Versailles is the most significant acquisition in the department's history. Many of you have had the opportunity to meet or work with her during her time here. She is remembered not just for her contributions to many organizations, but as a steadfast friend, a generous colleague, and a true citizen of the world. So in conclusion, I think for all of us, it's hard to believe that it was only one year ago that our director, Thomas Campbell, joined us in the Corette Auditorium 
for his in-person and provocative lecture on the tapestries of Henry VIII. So much has happened since then to change our perspective and our priorities. I am so impressed with all that the TAC members have done to maintain our sense of community. Like all of you, I look forward to the time when we can again meet in person. But until then, please continue your support. Be sure you've renewed your membership. And where possible, please add a donation. So once more, a big thank you to each of you who have worked with us to adapt to our changing circumstances. And a special thank you from me that I've had the opportunity to meet so many of you. By email, of course. <laughs>